ketosis works differently in different species. So up on the left, we have animals that we know often go into long fasting phases, the bear when it hibernates or the camel. And it turns out that these animals, much to my surprise when I learned about it, actually don't use ketogenesis in those fasting phases. They have biochemical pathways that, turn that prevent that from happening. Down at the bottom there, we have migrating birds. They do use ketogenesis very efficiently, but only when they're migrating in that fasting period. So they're, all, they're, they're the ultimate ketogenic athletes. They get really fat when they're on land, and then they switch into a ketogenic mode for migration. The animals up on the top right are carnivorous. So you might think, oh, well, they'll definitely be in ketosis, but it turns out they're not. Uh, cats, for example, when, when they start to fast, they, they can't really turn off gluconeogenesis. They really want to stay in this glucose mode. That's what they're physiologically adapted for. And so even though they will make some ketones, it's actually not very good for them. They'll develop fatty liver. Dolphins, on the other hand, have a genetic mutation that prevents ketogenesis from even happening. The ones that are most like us are dogs and rodents. Uh, don't do ketogenesis quite the way we do. So a dog, for example, if you want a dog to be in ketosis, you either have to restrict their calories and or protein or give them a lot of exercise or feed them MCT oils. Otherwise, they're just not gonna be in ketosis. And the same is almost true with rodents. Rodents, you can get them on a ketogenic ad libitum diet that has just enough protein, but if you give them even a tiny bit more, they're automatically out. And even when those animals are in ketosis, they, they just don't get into it as deeply as we do even when they're fasted. So humans have this really fascinating and unique ability to, to get into ketosis even though they are eating protein. And, but you can also see this in studies when you look at epilepsy, for example. It's been shown that uh, definitely you can get in ketosis and have therapy if you're eating just enough protein. Even if you use a diet with ad libitum protein, having 30% or even more sometimes of your calories coming from protein, for most people that doesn't put them out of ketosis and it doesn't stop the therapeutic benefit. Anything that restricts protein activates the energy phase. This is a plant-based advocate, McCarty, who's talking about vegan proteins, and he's saying that the proteins that we use in vegan diets actually might reduce, re reduce our risk of these various diseases through promoting increased glucagon activity. That's interesting. There's a paper that McCarty discusses in that paper, uh, which is here by uh, Deskovich from 1982. And what they did was they took some people on an arm omnivorous, low-fat diet, and all they changed was where the protein was coming from. So from animal-based protein to soy. And what they saw was glucagon went up and insulin went down, and so their, their insulin to glucagon ratio went down. And McCarty expounds on the wonderful benefits that you can get by lowering your insulin to glucagon ratio, and so everybody should be eating a vegan diet. <laughs> I guess he doesn't know that ketogenesis does that. Um, and, and the reason why has to do with essential proteins. So he talked a lot about how the vegan diet has a much higher proportion of non-essential proteins compared to essential proteins. And, and that, of course, suppresses mTOR because your body's not going to put you in the build mode if you don't have enough materials to build. There's just no reason to go there. <laughs>